Greetings all, Joe here, and uh, we're going to brew some beer today. So, last time I mentioned that uh, I was going to use an extract. Well, I decided since I have all this grain sitting around, might as well use it. Instead of, you know, using basically that bag of flour or whatever, um, I took some pale ale malt, some pale malt, and uh, took a little food processor, you know, to substitute as a mill, and uh, we're gonna use that for our mash to make our wort. Here is the unmilled grain on the right and the milled grain on the left. So it's not perfect, but, you know, neither is anything, especially in these times with everything going on. What I'm doing today, I'm kind of doing a little experiment. It's gonna be a pale ale, but with German hops. I had all these Saz hops lying around, and uh, like I've mentioned in class, I've got a big taste for European, especially German style hops. I know that it was very polarizing for y'all in class, you know, on the, uh, the Czech Pilsner, Pilsner Raquel that we tried. It was very polarizing, roughly about half of y'all hated it, but a lot of y'all didn't, so. That's my taste. I'm going to be the one who's drinking it. So, you know, obviously I'm making beer for me and I invite everybody to make beer that you like. Uh, as far as additional ingredients that uh, a lot of people are excited about, you know, like cherries, strawberries. Um, uh, I think there was a couple people who wanted to throw some spices in there, like uh, cloves and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, the only thing that I'm adding in there is nothing. <laughs> I like just the taste of grains, hops, water, yeast. I'm kind of a purist, so, you know, once again, I'm making beer for me, so I'm going to make stuff that I like. Uh, what we have here on this side, uh, which y'all really can't see too well, so I'll adjust it. I went ahead and set up my three hop cycles. So what we have right here is first my cycle of bittering hops which all these are the same hops, it's just slightly different measurements. Two ounces of sauce hops that we're gonna add first in the boil, two ounces of, of uh, flavor hops, which are also sauce hops. Then finally, the aroma hops, another two ounces of aroma hops we're gonna put in in the last five minutes. So in case you forgot, this is what hops look like. Shout out to all you potheads, cause y'all are probably breaking some up right now. But, uh, here we have a scale for measuring all that stuff out. Uh, right now I've got uh, some wort uh, being made or basically the mash process happening right now. Originally, all of this barley, this is all starch. So we need to turn all this starch into sugar. So we want to get this in even temperature between about 145 to 150 and maintain that temperature for at least an hour or so. So right now, let's see what we're at. Uh, well, it's probably hard for y'all to see, but we're about 140, kind of creeping up there. But, uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep, a, keep an eye on this like a hawk since I'm just using a little funky electric stove here in my little small apartment. It's actually a big apartment, but my kitchen is tiny. Whenever you're brewing beer or any kind of fermented product, it's temperature control, temperature control, temperature control, and sanitation, which is just important, but I'll get into that in the next step. Uh, just some other stuff I have laying around, obviously, you know, I have you know, a big gallon measuring bucket. This is uh, three gallons inside the stock pot. Obviously, you want a good thermometer. I have a little saucepan ready for uh, activating yeast whenever we you know, have time to pitch the yeast. Uh, down here, this is my sanitation bucket. And we have our cooling coil, that copper coil that's gonna reduce the temperature quickly after we finish our boil, that is in there in sanitizer. So what you use for sanitation purposes for basically everything that you touch is actually iodine. So iodine's a really good food safe sanitizer and it will play nice with the yeast and all the other ingredients that we're using. So that's, a, that's pretty much a standard method or the standard you know, chemical that we use to keep everything sanitary. So I'll be back whenever we're ready to start the boil. Hey, what's up y'all? I'm back and uh, we're about to start the boiling process. And just a couple things, let me just show you, you know, kind of what's going on right now. So, you know, like last time I said, I have the 
three cycles of hops already. Uh, on the left, we have our dry hop. In the middle, we have our flavor hop. And on the right, we have our Roma hops. And uh, we have uh, the hydrometer graduated cylinder all ready to go whenever it's time to get our original gravity reading, you know, that will kind of give us a gist of, you know, how much alcohol we're going to produce in here. Uh, the wort right now uh, just started the boil, but first, you know, uh, we went ahead and uh, put the cooling coil already in there. So it's going to, you know, be part of the boil. And the reason why we went ahead and put it in there while we start the boil is because it sanitizes the coil itself. And, you know, obviously boiling water is about, you know, the best way ever to sanitize just about anything. So let me kind of show you what that wart looks like right now. So this is what it looks like, kind of is starting to resemble beer. Uh, as it ferments, it's actually going to clarify quite a bit. You know, the final product is going to be a few shades lighter because, you know, all of the yeast in there are going to start chowing down and with that is going to come a little bit of color change. So if you actually drink this like I am right now, you would notice that it's super, super sugary. It's almost like Cheerios, but with like a bunch of sugar added to it. And that's because, you know, part of uh, the mashing process, all of that starch was turned into sugar. So hence all the sweetness. So uh, I've got all my things ready to go. And so we uh, got the beer or the wort up to a boil. We're gonna have our bittering hops, which I have ready to go. Right into this here uh, pot. Yeah, that's what's called the pot. Yeah, words are hard. So this is going to be a 20 minute boil. Uh, the first one's going to be full 20 minutes for bittering. We're going to go 10 minutes for uh, flavor hops. And then in the final five minutes, we're going to go ahead and throw in our aroma hops. So let me go ahead and set my timer. Set timer for 10 minutes. Oh, if you want to see what the boil looks like, here's what's going on so far. All right, so we have five minutes left, and uh, it's time to add in the aroma hops. So once again, just kind of stuff that guy in there in the stock pot. And all right, about 30 seconds. Okay, cool. We've hit the 20 minute boil cycle. So let's go ahead and uh, get our hot bags out of here. Sure to drain all the good stuff out. All right, I'll just wait for these to cool down and then, uh, you know, pull the hops, throw them in the washing machine. So now we gotta cool this, and uh, I don't want to be here all night. So we have this, uh, you know, this nice. Ooh, that's hot. Be careful with those. Copper's conductor. So we have the coil down here, uh, which is a conductor. And this is a pretty cool kind of setup. So, you know, you notice how there's two tubes. Water, water comes in and then water goes out. And the coil will just chill everything. And yeah, we have my kind of dirty sink going on right here. And uh, you can see, you know, just the water is shooting out of there after going through the whole coil thing. And we're gonna do this until we get about 80 degrees and then around at the 80 degree point that's when we're going to pitch our yeast so in the meantime we need to go ahead and uh, get the yeast activated so with this particular yeast you want to be between it says on the package between 86 and 95 degrees so i'm just going to take this little saucepan and uh, heat up about a cup of water, throw this yeast in and get it activated. So once we get everything transferred into the fermentation tank, we can go ahead and pitch the yeast, seal it up, and we're done. So with that water, since it's gonna go into that fermentation tank and we have, you know, contamination problem, you know, with, uh, with uh, just tap water, I'm gonna go ahead and boil it and uh, then I'm just gonna let it reduce.
how well these war chillers work because we started around 210 degrees, 215, somewhere around there, and we've already dropped to 130 that quickly. So these things work really, really well. It's already you know, kind of cool to the touch. So hooray, technology and science. All right, so with the little saucepan, we already hit the boiling point. The stove is surprisingly puts out a decent amount of BTUs. So I'm going to go ahead and kill it and let it start chilling. So take a take as much weight out of the game as we possibly can. It's really important that you don't put your yeast inside water that's too hot to activate it because you'll actually kill it. So you have to be very careful about that step. Uh, we lost a couple batches last semester and I think that was why. All right, what's up y'all? Uh, so our little saucepan is about nine degrees, which is at perfectly within our threshold of 87 and 95 so let's go ahead and get this all mixed up in case you want to know what uh, yeast looks like it's like just little very fine pellets kind of cool i guess maybe not whatever go ahead and uh get inside that saucepan want to kind of make it look like almost like a very light roux. Yeast are the organism that's going to do all the magic. Make all the booze. Alright, we're about 80 degrees inside the stock pot with all that wort ready to go. I have sanitized this bucket and uh, it's all ready for the wort. And here we have what's called an auto siphon. So putting it through an auto siphon is going to help, you know, kind of filter it a little bit. If there's any holes left or any hops floating around, this is going to kind of filter that out or hopefully filter out as much as we can. So these, uh, whoever invented this is kind of ingenious. Um, I'm going to first go ahead and uh, make sure it's all empty. Oh. That's okay. I'll just kind of pull it out. Make a little bit of a mess, but when you brew beer, you're going to make a mess. So it's not that big of a deal. Just clean it up at the end. So, one end is going to go in the wart. And the other end of this hose, after I get it all sanitized, is going to go inside this fermentation bucket. Let me adjust the camera so y'all can maybe see it a little bit better. So down here, sanitation bucket, have that end of the hose being nice and sanitary. And we'll go ahead and drop this end in the bucket. The uh, auto siphon part is already inside the wart. And just give it a couple pumps and Isaac Newton is gonna do the rest. Oh, gravity. So, I just feed it a little bit. All right, so once we kind of pump it a little couple times, then the wart is flowing. See, we have one end right here going through the tube, and then the wart is just filling up. be a relatively small batch I'm only gonna make like a six pack of 16 ounce bottles but you know for now we want to avoid you know as much sediment as possible throughout this process all right so the beer or the wort is uh, transferred to that fermentation tank so the next step the next step is getting our original gravity reading. So we have a graduated cylinder and a hydrometer. So with water, once again, the specific gravity of water, which is what we're measuring, you know, we kind of do a little bit of math to find how much alcohol is in here. The specific gravity of water is 1.00. We kind of base everything off of that. Uh, however, 
the wart is going to have a different specific gravity. So let's go ahead and find this out. So you just take this little turkey baster, stick that into a wart. Let's kind of extract a little bit, get it in here. We're basically going to have to fill this up as much as we can. After this entire process, look how much this thing is floating. Wow. Okay, so this line right here, where the fluid is breaking, you know, where the line is from the fluid, this is called the meniscus line. And looks like, ooh, this is a pretty stout, it looks like this is gonna be a fairly stout beer. Let me kind of set the camera down for a second so I can get an exact reading. So, in case you're wondering, every single beer you make, you kind of need to make a label. So I have what's called, you know, my Saw's Pale Ale. It's just kind of an experiment, probably one offer. We'll see how it turns out. But what we have right here is the equation on how you find your, how much alcohol you have, your percentage of alcohol. So ABV, alcohol by volume, is original gravity minus final gravity times 131.25. So just so you know, for any of you math nerds out here, but we're going to label the original gravity and then the final gravity here at the end after we uh, go through the fermentation process. We're breaking right between blue and white, so this one should be fairly easy. So we're about 1.030. So original gravity is 1.030. Okay, so let's get this lid nice and sanitary. Sanitation buckets ready to go. Let's give this a good wipe down inside and out. And make sure that we're not going to contaminate our beer. Okay, so time to fish the yeast. And this is an extremely complex process. Let me show you how we do it. We just take the solution we made with all the yeast in here and pour it into a bucket. That's all. That's how you pitch yeast. So, lid is ready. Get that capped on there. You have to definitely apply some pressure on these. Finally, we have the double bubble airlock. Nice, sanitized. And there is what's called a bunghole right here on the top. And we're just going to stick that guy right in here. And then find a cool, quiet, not quiet, but a cool place uh, in my apartment, which will probably be a corner or something, and hurry up and wait for a couple weeks until it's ready to bottle and condition and all that kind of stuff. All right, so that's the first entire day of the brewing process. Not too bad, you know. I've, I've said it a hundred times. If you can make a soup, then you can make beer. If this isn't rocket science, it can get very scientific, and if you do it at the commercial level, you're almost certainly a chemist or have a chemistry background uh, because there's a lot involved. But for these kind of applications, you know, you're just making some beer for fun and, uh, you know, not too concerned if you make exactly the same thing over and over again, then, you know, it's just a good hobby and fun thing to do to experiment with. So uh, be sure to... Uh, answer the quiz questions that I'll have later on uh, or that that I've uploaded to Blackboard and uh, also get your beer labels uploaded 
by Tuesday, and uh, the test will also open up on Tuesday. So good luck on the test. If you have any questions or concerns, please shoot me an email, and I'll talk to you later, folks. Peace out.